It's one of the most famous science fiction movies ever to come out of 1977. It has a great story, engaging characters, and excellent special effects, and it's not Star Wars. Yes, we're talking about Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and this is Science 5. Close Encounters of the Third Kind was written by Steven Spielberg after having previously made the UFO-themed Firelight in 1964 at the age of 17. Initially, the focus of Close Encounters, which for a time was entitled Watch the Skies, was vastly different to the final version. At one point, the protagonist was an Air Force officer and then a police officer before finally being altered to focus on a normal person who experiences contact with the UFO which in the 1970s was an ever-growing phenomenon that captured a lot of people's attention. To begin with, the film follows two uniquely different themes. The first revolves around the now famous Hollywood trope of a government conspiracy who are hiding the truth from the public regarding an upcoming alien visitation, whilst the second relates directly to people who are already experiencing encounters with UFOs. As for the former, an interesting aspect of the climactic alien-human encounter is the complete absence of military forces or armed personnel at the landing site, as evidenced by Roy and Gillian who just walk into the area unaccosted. Somewhat ironically, the polar opposite occurred in Spielberg's follow-up alien movie, E.T. the Extraterrestrial, where everyone was hunting the alien. What makes the film truly unique is the aliens themselves are both peaceful and benevolent, which is practically unheard of in the history of sci-fi cinema involving extraterrestrials. You can just imagine the studio execs asking Spielberg in the 1970s, do they come out of their ship with their laser blasters? At the very least, it does prove that a non-violent alien movie can actually be successful. Upon analysing the government's aim to keep the alien presence a secret, we learn that the secret isn't going to last very long as both an official at the landing site and Gillian take unauthorised photos of the event. Although somewhat amusingly, it would be easy to imagine people writing their photos off as being cheap fakes. Yet the most significant question the film asks is what happens when ordinary people are exposed to extraterrestrial encounters. In this instance, these individuals are compelled to visit Devil's Tower where the aliens will be landing. With this in mind, it's easy to conclude the aliens are effectively inviting all these people to greet them, which makes you wonder if this was their intention all along, and if so, would they then take all of them onto their ship as they do with Roy? In addition, another key question to ask is if the aliens have been abducting humans from Earth for at least 30 years in the timeline of the film, what happens to them on the ship? Furthermore, the government is clearly aware of an exchange program which permits the selection of pilgrims to board the ship, which then prompts the likelihood that some of the aliens are staying on Earth for a period of time, and with that, suddenly Area 51 springs to mind. The film certainly poses some interesting questions, like how long do the pilgrims and Roy stay on the ship for? Not only that, but the government now knows that aliens actually exist, so what happens next? At the very least, this is one film that really could have done with the sequel, just so we know how the story continues. One aspect of the film worth addressing is Roy's wife, Ronnie, who is skeptical about the news reports surrounding UFOs. Needless to say, Ronnie's perspective represents the pragmatic view of the everyday person who continue to deny the notion that unidentified flying objects are real and could be intrinsically connected to aliens from another planet. Except in this case, it does. Without doubt one of the most curious scenes in the film, and the most uncharacteristic for the aliens, is the sequence in Gillian's home where the extraterrestrials go to great lengths to abduct Barry. In what would normally be the bread and butter for an 80s horror movie, we are exposed to images of bright lights shining under the doors, something threatening coming down the chimney, and the screws holding the vents being unscrewed from beneath the floor. In the end, the unseen aliens are successful in grabbing Barry, only to return him in the film's finale, which actually makes his capture somewhat unnecessary. Regardless of this seemingly unusual plot point, it definitely makes for a gripping and intense scene. When it's all said and done, Close Encounters is quite simply a fantastic, non-violent alien visitation story, which after nearly 50 years still holds up remarkably well. Not only that, but you'll never look at mashed potato the same way again. So what are you waiting for? Grab a fork, get a spud, and start that sculpting action. And while you do that, be sure to join us again for another Sci-Fi Spective.